Hello, in this video I'll be showing you three examples of when you should duplicate tracks in ACID Pro. For more tips and tricks using ACID Pro, be sure to subscribe to my channel and join the Facebook group as I'll be sharing over 20 years of experience using ACID Pro that I've learnt about the software. Uh, so yeah, be sure to subscribe if you would like to get more information on how to use the software. If you would like to get the latest version of the software, be sure to check out my affiliate link in the description of the video uh, where you'd be able to get the latest version of the software. With that said, let's get into the video. Three examples of when you should duplicate tracks. So to duplicate a track, just simply right click on the track that you want to duplicate and select duplicate track here uh, and that will just duplicate the track so I've got this uh, snare sound here I'm just going to right click on this uh, on the square here and select duplicate track as you can see this has now made a, a duplicate of this track now in this first example I want to duplicate this uh, snare track uh, so that I can have one playing normally and then on the other one on this second one here um, I can add some effects on it maybe like an echo or a reverb like in dub reggae you know you kind of have like a normal snare and a normal snare and then there'll be like a, a snare that's got loads of echo and reverb on it uh, with loads of effects on it so now by having a, a duplicate track, I can now just draw my normal snares and then have this track. Um, I could add uh, some effects onto it. Uh, and it's just really to save time. In the new version of Acid Pro, Acid Pro 11, you've got the ability to click on the actual sample. You've got an effects button here and start an effects chain. But the reason why in this situation you know if I'm going to be doing like, you know snares like this it's saving me time by having just one track that has the effects I've done to it so if I have this track just with the effects on every time I draw a snare onto this track it's already going to have the effects on it if you were to do it individually by starting an effects chain on each sample uh, like if you were doing it here and then every fourth one you want to put effects on it, it's gonna use a lot more uh, processor memory, uh, computer memory, by having all these different effects chains. Whereas if you've got just one track, which already has the effects added onto it, it's just gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of computer um, processor memory uh, by just being able to go, you know, Every time you want the effect, you just have it on your duplicate track. So that's the first example of why you might want to duplicate a track. Another good time when you want to duplicate a track uh, for this second example um, is when you want to layer a sound. So let's say I've got a, a MIDI instrument and I've got a, a sound on uh, on here and what I've done is um, um, I've drawn out my my melody I've done the melody um, so let's say uh, like this and now you know if you've done something really long and complicated then you don't want to keep on having to do that melody over and over again but if you want to have multiple instruments playing that same melody what you could do is right click on this this track duplicate it so now I have a duplicate of this MIDI so it saves me having to draw that melody out again and then I could assign this track so this tracks playing one instrument but then I could assign this duplicate track to a, a different instrument so that way it's saving me loads of time having to draw out the melody over and over again um, and I can just duplicate the track and change this to a, a different instrument. Uh, and it's really useful for layering sounds with multiple instruments playing the same melody. Now, the third 
uh, example of when you might want to duplicate a track comes at the mixing and mastering final stages. Um, so like here I've got a project, but let's say you want to bring certain sounds to the front. Uh, for example, you know, like these kick drums here, you know, I've done all this work, chopping all these kick drums and different snares and stuff. And what I want to do is kind of like highlight those, but without kind of affecting the balance of the mix. I just want to make those bits a little bit louder. I can't turn them up. You can see on the mixer, the kick drum already goes up to 0.6. So if I start turning this up anymore, it's going to go in the red. And also, if I start turning it up more, I'm also going to have to start changing everything else on the mix. And I've got all these different sounds in the mix. It, that's just going to be a pain. It's been mixed as I've been building the track. Um, you know, I don't want to start having to go back on all that work. You know, I don't want to turn it up anymore. And also I can't as well, because if I start putting this any louder, these kick drums is going to go into the red. You can see on the mixer here, look, 0.6. So this is a good time when you uh, could duplicate the tracks. Uh, so, you know, hear the difference, you know, before and after. So this is before. Okay, so that's before, and then if I duplicate these um, these bits that I want to stand out, so these kicks here, I want these to stand out more, so I'm going to right click and duplicate this track. So there it is, I've duplicated that track. I also want these uh, snares to kind of uh, pop out a little bit more as well, so I want them, them to pop out more, so I'm going to duplicate those as well. Um, I've got these other snares as well, so I'm going to duplicate those. I've I've got a limiter on the master, so I don't need to worry about it going into the red on the master, on the main master, because that's that's got a limiter on it. Um, and yeah, you can kind of just hear the difference uh, once these have been duplicated. It just kind of brings them to the front and puts a bit more attention on these these sounds. See what, see what you think now. So yeah, if I just take take, take these out, so I'm just going to um, edit undo. So I'm just going to undo what I've just done. Okay, so hope you found that video useful. Um, if you're interested in learning more about Acid Pro, be sure to subscribe. I've got a lot more videos planned for um, showing how to use the software. I've been using it for over 20 years. If you want to get the latest version of Acid Pro, then uh, I've put a link in the description with my affiliate link if you want to get the latest version of Acid Pro. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.